Snake milking is a process to extract venom from snakes in order to get their venom. And the purpose is to build protein profile and to make snakes anti-venom. This anti-venom is important especially for this species because it is often encountered in the wild and it is known to bite human. This is a juvenile of Calocelasma rhodostoma. And as you can see, Dr. Slamet must hold carefully because the head is very small. Is there a specific method used when you're milking the snake? Yeah, the way Dr. Slamet holds the snake just behind the jaw uh, because he wants to open the jaw. Uh, you're not only force him to force them to open the mouth, but also to squeeze the, the venom gland. Juvenile snake is less eager to bite because they know they only have limited amount of venom stored. But if they're annoyed, they want to bite. Although usually it will be a dry bite, so it's not productive to make snake angry when you are milking. Better to squeeze the venom gland in order to extract the, the venom. Juvenile will produce less venom compared to adult because they don't have enough nutrition to produce the venom. Are all of these snakes wild caught or from your lab? Yeah, these are uh, those individual are wild snakes, but uh, I get it from snake rescuer and they rescue several snakes when entering human settlement. So catching the adult viper snake in order to milk it is riskier compared to the juvenile one. We cannot predict when he wants to strike or not because he's smarter and cautious and decisive. Meanwhile, it's easier to predict the juvenile uh, when to strike because it has frenzy movement and he wants to get away. Dr. Slamet is holding the tail of adult viper snake when he milking it because adult is more powerful compared to the juvenile. If he releases uh, the tail, it will coil on him and it will distract him from milking the snake and will be dangerous for him. So this snake is Pungarus fasciatus, not Pungarus candidus because it has a black band circling the body, especially the ventral part. And also the tip of the tail is blunt. Making a crate is different because its fang is uh, small and it's erected, not folded. Uh, that's why we have to position them in, uh, in order to get it to bite the balloon. It is not enough to hold the jaw because the fang is very short compared to fiber. So yeah, we need to make him angry in order to encourage it to bite. The final step of snake milking is storing the venom. It is important to use siding because it's more precise to get the venom from the bigger class. We don't want to milk the snake again because first, it's dangerous for snake if they're milking it regularly. It causes him stressful and died. And also it's potentially dangerous for us. We will get bite someday if we continuously milking the snake. Usually there is a difference in coloration between fiber snakes and elapid uh, snake phenom. Fiber snake phenom usually yellow colored. Meanwhile, the uh, elapid phenom usually transparent colored. The differences between color may be due to uh, the structures and the composition of uh, amino acid who reconstruct the phenom protein. What is the importance of snake milking? Snake milking is important because the phenom from the snake milking is important to make the anti-phenom. But most importantly, I think there are more snake bites in Indonesia recently because their habitat is reduced. So if we can treat the snake bite cheaply and easily, I think it can reduce the stigma against venomous snakes.